Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can present your staff and team members and company employees using the team widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin. This widget allows you to pick how best to showcase your team, what kind of layout would work for you, whether it would involve hover effects and what kind of hover effects those would be. You also have the freedom to decide if you want to use images alone or images with text and social links, or make team members' information accessible on Hover. Moreover, you can create different combinations with other page elements. You can mix and match all the widgets from the key add-ons collection and create a really striking and unique team presentation. So, how do you go about working with this widget? Start by going to the backend, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for Team. Drag it over to the page. And two things become immediately obvious. One, I prepped the section I'm working in to set the appropriate number of columns. And two, you need to add as many team elements to the page as the number of team members you want to show. Now, you can do that by adding the widget to different columns and places on the page again and again. Or, and this is what I'll be doing, you can complete one team element and then duplicate it as many times as you need. This has the added benefit of copying all the layout and style settings you've made with the first element onto all the others, so your turnaround time is shorter and the elements retain a uniform look. So, let's get cracking with the first one. This is the default widget look. It has a placeholder image and some dummy text. And when you start working on it, the first thing you can change is the layout option. Right now, the information is placed below the image. But we can change that using these other settings. So we can opt for info below left. With that one, the text appears only once you hover over the element. Besides that, we have the info from bottom, which looks like this. You hover and this information tab pops up. Then there's info on hover inset. With this one, you hover and the information appears like so. By the way, with this particular layout, you also get this text option if you want to input additional text. Alright, this was just an aside. Going back to the layout settings, the last one is info on hover, and it looks like this. For my chosen design, I'll be using the info below layout. So you don't have to hover for all the information to be visible. This is also going to be helpful when we cover the text style options. But more on that later. For now, let's look at our next option, name. Very straightforward, this is where you enter the name of your team member. I'll change this placeholder text now. Ok, there we are. And then we have the role option for entering their job title or role within the organization. Let me change that quickly as well. Alright. Below these, we have the image field. Simply click on it to choose an image from your media library or upload a new image. I'll use an existing one. Here, insert media. And once you've picked your image, you can select the image proportion. Since I uploaded an image with carefully selected proportions, I can keep this set to original. However, if you prefer, you can choose any of these other settings in the dropdown. Alright, after that, we have social and two items under that. Each item represents an icon. Two items, two icons. I'm going to add a third one. There we go. So, in the icon options, I'll start with the first one. We have the option to pick an icon for starters. That can be something from the icon library or an SVG you upload. I'm going to use one from the library. And that'll be for Twitter. Select. Insert. Alright. Then in the link field, I'll simply set a hashtag. This is just a placeholder as I'm creating this solely for the tutorial, but you should make sure to add your actual social media profile or account URLs. Ok. I'll speed through replacing the other two icons now. There is nothing complicated to it and we've just seen how the options work. So no need to toggle. There. Alright. With my icons customized, all my content is there. This brings us to the second section of the Content tab options, and that is the Developer Tools. When we open this, there's just one option here. 
Switching its setting to Yes will get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, so we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. OK. Now we can move on to the Style tab and see what we have in there. The first thing is the Name tag. That's for changing the tag for this text here. The default setting is H4, but I'll replace that with H5. Next, we have the name color for changing the color of that same text. Then there's the name typography. The first option here lets us change the font family for the name. There is a wide selection of fonts for you to choose from. Then we can change the font size, or adjust the font weight by picking any of these other settings in the dropdown. We also have the transform option for making the name, say, uppercase. Or we can use the style option to switch the name between normal, which is the default, italic, or oblique. And with the decoration option, we can add a line over, under, or through the name. Finally, we have the line height and letter spacing options, if we want to change the spacing between lines of text or individual letters. So those are the typography options. After that, we have options for styling the roll text. They include the roll color. You can easily set any color you like. As I know the specific one I want, I'll set the hex code for it. There. Then we have the typography options for the row. These are identical to what we saw under name typography. So, rather than explain them again, I'll simply set what I need and we can move on. And that is the font size, 16 pixels. And the font weight, 500. And that's it. Following this, we have the icon options. So there's the icon's color. It has this usual color picker which I'll use to set the hex code for this almost black shade. OK. Alongside this, there's the icon's hover color. Right now, if we look, there's no color change on hover. So with this option, we can select a color that will differ from the original, and then hovering will make the icon switch to the new color, and back to the original when you move away. For this, I'll set the same hex code I used for the roll text. And now when I hover, they match. And I have this neat minimalist palette. OK. After that, we have the icon size option. It's very straightforward. Changing the value lets you change the size of the icon. I'll set 15 pixels for my icons. Then we have the image hover option. Right now, it's set to none. And if we look at the image, nothing happens when I move over it. You can change that to zoom, so it has this gentle zoom in effect. Or you can opt for scale, which will make the image grow slightly out of its frame. For this, I'll use zoom. Then we have two more options here. They are, if you recall from earlier in the video, we had that info on hover inset layout that came with the text option. Well, these options are for styling that text. Since I chose to use a different layout, these won't work for me. But they are the same color and typography options we've seen in this section already. So let's carry on. OK, after this, we have the spacing style section. Here we have options like the roll margin bottom. It's for creating more space under the roll text. When I start to increase, we can see how it changes. And then we have this additional space here. I'm going to specify a value of 10 pixels here. Then we have the name margin bottom. It does the same thing, only with the name. So we can change this space here. For that one, I'll set 5 pixels. After that, we have the space between icons. It does exactly what its name suggests. I'll set 25 pixels for this. Then we have the content top margin. So that's for creating this space here, above the text content. I'm going to set 22 pixels for this. And our final option here is for the text margin bottom. However, I don't have that text. The one the option applies to is something you only get with the info on hover inset layout. OK, that brings us to the content style section. There's only one option in here, and it's for adjusting the content alignment. The default setting is left, but you can replace that easily with center or right. I'll set mine to be on the left. And that's it. My theme element is fully customized and styled the way I wanted it to be, which means I can now duplicate it and get all the same settings with any copies I make. I'll drag it over to the spot I prepared. Now all I need to do is switch the content, but you've seen how that goes, so I won't bore you with the repetition. 
Instead, let's skip to the part where I have all my team elements ready. Ok, here they are. My team is here and I'll hit update to see what I've made. So all these different elements share the same style and hover effect. This gives them a dose of uniformity although they each represent a separate instance of the team element. So as you've seen, it takes mere minutes to create a team element for your page and even less to create more with the duplicate option. And when you're ready to start making these elements yourself, you can take a peek at the page we started from and check out the examples shown here. Right away we can see the one that I copied for this tutorial. The examples you see on this page can serve as guidelines for potential design solutions or you can use them for inspiration or as the starting point for your own design, whichever you prefer. Whether you take advantage of anything you see here is entirely up to you. The purpose of this tutorial was to show you what options you get with the team widget and how to go about using them. We hope you found this tutorial helpful and that you will soon be trying out the team widget, along with all the others in the key add-ons for Elementor collection. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.